All right, so we're going to continue with number 72. Um, we have, we're talking about Hamiltonian circuits. And so a driver must deliver 16 businesses. Um, the question is, how many Hamiltonian circuits would there theoretically be? All right, so if we have 16 businesses, that means 16 vertices. So the formula would be n minus one factorial. So in this case, we got 16 minus one factorial, which is 15 factorial, which is a big number. So you get your calculator and I do 15, um, let's see, PRB, Factorial, you get this decimal. It says to round to the nearest hundredth. So that means two decimal places, 1.31, 1 1.31 times 10 to the 12th. Okay, so the way we have to write it is 1.31, I'm using an X, um, this symbol is not the letter X. It has to be that um, symbol, okay, for multiplication. So this is not letter X, but it is a symbol for multiplication. So when you type this in, there should be like a little tool palette and you're gonna choose that. Number 73 is just another definition. Um, the method that approximates the solution uh, to the salesperson problem is called the nearest neighbor, kind of makes sense, salesperson, neighbor. Um, and the way we do that involves the smallest weight. So that's just the definition. Another couple of definitions for you. Uh, a graph whose edges have numbers attached to them are weighted graphs. The numbers shown along those are called weights. The problem of finding Hamilton circuits is the sum of all the numbers is called the traveling salesperson. And such a Hamilton circuit is called the optimal solution. So that one might be a little tricky, but uh, just kind of pay attention. Uh, to you know just read over this one a few times 75 is another definition um here this is a method for that determines the solution for the traveling salesperson involves listing all hamilton circuits and that's our brute force method and then 76 Determine the number of Hamilton circuits in a complete graph with the following vertices. It has six vertices, okay? So six vertices, and it has six minus one factorial Hamilton circuits. I'll do it this way, Hamilton circuits is six minus one factorial, which is five factorial, which is five times four times three times two, which is 120. Number 77, it says, if you have this complete weighted graph, what is the weight of DE? So I look at DE, DE is just six. So that's all there is to that one. It's kind of hard to see it, it's small, these numbers are small, but yeah, that edge is six. Okay. Probably gonna have to lift it up again, it's probably hard to see it. You know, focus. All right. Use the complete 
weighted graph to find the total weight of this Sam Hamilton circuit. So you can pause it and you can try it yourself. I'm about to work it out. I'm gonna go from A to D to B to C to A, and then we'll add those up. A to D, D to B, B to C, and C to A. So, um, anywhere I have the yellow, the line yellow highlighted, I'm gonna add those numbers up. 14 plus 12 plus 24 plus 20. Okay, so those are the numbers I need to add. 14 plus 12 plus 24 plus 20. And anytime I have to add a few things, I might do it twice, just to double check. All right, number 79. Uh, we're running some errands. Of course, if we run errands, we have to come back home at some point. Um, and they tell you that one solution is home, dry cleaner, market, post office, bank, hospital, home. Then we need to look at what each of these are labeled. So home is just home. H-O-M-E. Dry cleaners is just D. Market is a capital M. Post office is just a capital P. Bank is a capital B. And hospital is a capital H. And back to home. Okay. So I need to add up that circuit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight. I'm going to go through and I'm just going to highlight my routes. And then we'll add them up. So home to the dry cleaners, to the markets, to the post office, to the bank, to the hospital, back to home. Oh, well, I'm just making, going all around here. So home to the dry cleaners, to the market, to the post office the bank, the hospital, home. All right, so I'm gonna add up all of those. Two plus six plus eight plus four plus six plus five. Okay, I'm adding up six things, so I might wanna do this a couple of times. Okay, I got 31. I might do this a second time to make sure. I got 31. All right, number eight, 80. Create the, a complete weighted graph that models the information in this table. Okay, then notice this is telling you the weight from each vertex to vertex. So home to itself is doesn't count or bank to itself. So that's why those asterisks are there. But from home to bank is five. Okay, so home to bank is five. So this one's okay so far. Home to bank, um, this one is no good because it says two home to bank. And then uh, C says it's 5.5, that's no good. As well as D, so by process of elimination, I know that A has to work, but I can check the rest. Um, home to post office is 3.5, home to um, market is 4.5, bank to home is five, bank to post office is three, market is two, so yeah. That's it. Number 81. It wants to know the sidewalks on a college campus. 
Sidewalks on this college campus shown to the right are buried under two feet of snow and need to be shoveled. Find the minimum spanning tree that allows people to move from one location to another among all five campus buildings and parking lot. Okay. Use Kruskal's algorithm, of course. Find the minimum spanning tree that allows people to move from one location to um, another among all five campus buildings in the parking lot. All right, we need to find, going back to Crust School's theorem, we need to find the shortest one. So I guess I could list these out. I don't know if you can see them. Nope, I hope this didn't get cut off. Well, that looks fine. So let's find the shortest one. There's one, I'm gonna write them all out. Uh, 155, 110, 205, 120, 135. Okay, I'm making the round first, 155, 110, 205, 120, 135. Now let's do the inside. 75, 50, 80. That is a 130. It's hard to tell. And 155. Okay. So 75, 50, 80, 155, 130. All right, so I need to find the shortest one first. Shortest one is 50. Where's 50? Okay. That connects these two. All right, now I have to find the next shortest, which is 75. Now, I move up to the next one, which is 80, but does 80 make a circuit? It does not, so it is good. All right, now we have to move up to 110. 110 is over here. It does not make a circuit because he's floating by himself. Uh, one. 20 is next. Uh oh, 120 makes a circuit. Got to throw it away. Throw it away. All right, moving up. 130. 130 um, does not make a circuit, so it's cool. Now I'll keep going. 135. Uh oh, that makes a circuit. Throw it away. 155, there's two of them. It doesn't matter which one I choose. I'm just going to look at one. That one does not work. And also, that one does not work. So we throw both of those away. 205 will make a circuit. So I'll go. Okay. So that is our minimum spanning tree. Now we have to add up these highlighted numbers. So I just added up the highlighted numbers. The order you add them doesn't matter. I got 445. I would do that a second time because that's a big number and that's a lot of numbers to add up. Okay. Okay, we got a couple of definitions. Number 82, uh, a graph that's connected with no circuits is the tree. Um, for such a graph, every edge is a bridge, and if there are n vertices, there has to be n minus 1 edges. Okay, we did those notes. Number 83, uh, fill in the blanks so that this is true. Uh, a tree that is created from a weighted graph that has the smallest possible weight is the minimum spanning tree. 
So let's do number 84. And we might do 85 as well. 84 question, is this a tree? Um, are there any circuits? No. Uh, so number 84. I'm looking to see if, if it's a circuit and if it's every connection is a bridge. That's the two main things that I'm looking for. So that is a tree. And then we'll do 85 and we'll stop after that. The graph has 17 vertices and 16 edges. All right, so vertices is 17. And then the edges is 16. Okay. Now, what we don't know, okay, it has no loops or multiple edges. Which of the statements is true? Well, this is one qualification that if you have 17 vertices, then you have to have 17 minus one equals 16 edges. That was from up there. That's one qualification, but what we don't know, we don't know, if it's connected, okay, so may or may not be a tree. 